How's it going, guys? Today, I'm going to share with you two battles showcasing the power that is Nasty Plot Salazzle. With a solid speed stand special attack, after a Nasty Plot or three, this thing can get out of control real quick. The first battle of two with Salazzle is against Turtle Owner, and the second is against Envious Goon, both from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord, which you should join if you want to battle me. So with that being said, be sure to sludge wave that subscribe button, and without further ado, let's jump into the battles. Alright, what have we got today? Turtle Owner has brought along a pretty nifty little sub-rain team, with Pelipper and Kingdra, which is pretty threatening. Hisuian Braviary, Never Sleep On It, and Shell Smash Torterra as well. Jolteon as well. You can't sleep on this team at all. So I think obviously I want to lead with Ninetales, expecting them to lead with Pelipper. Then I can no because they're slower than me. So I think I'm better off leading with something like um, the uh, Fretress and getting up the Stealth Rocks. Um, that might be useful. Uh, but other than that, I think we're pretty good. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Turtle Owner. So they're going to lead off with Raikou, which is obviously the Jolteon, nice and shiny. I ended up deciding to leave with Latios in the end. I changed my mind last second because I figured they might either leave with this, but also I have Thunderbolt for the Pelipper. So it's like it was a win-win. So, I mean, I can just drop a Draco right now and hurt something and then eject back out. So um, dropping a Draco is exactly what I'm going to do. I don't think they'll Terra Ice straight away. I think that's probably something they won't do. And um, they actually go straight for a Shadow Ball, which is going to sting a little bit, but Latios can take it for sure. Even if the specs, which I think they are based on that damage. Oh, it was a crit. Never mind. Um, also lowered my special defense, which is unfortunate because it means my eject pack is going to activate now, which means I don't get to drop a Draco on the Jolteon, which is very unfortunate. Um, but it is what it is. What can you do about that? So if we assume the specs, we can probably go Chestnut here and Belly Drum straight away. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to Belly Drum straight away. I kind of want to go into the likes of the uh, Salazzle. Salazzle does really well. Salazzle definitely does pretty well. If we assume the locks into Shadow Ball... So, um, we should go into Umbreon, I think. I think Umbreon is a sound switch, so Umbreon it is. It's the Evolution face-off. Um, so let's go for a... If we assume they're going to switch out into something like the Great Tusk or the Torterra, we should probably Foul Play or Taunt or Wish or something. So I think I will Wish here and try and get back into my Latios because they're going to go for Volt Switch as they do. And um, that's going to do no damage to my Umbreon, of course. And I didn't want to bring your typical Toxic Protect Wish... Umbreon. I wanted to bring a bit different utility. So we've got Taunt on there, Thunder Wave and Wish. And then Foul Play for damage. Turtless Beats comes in. Who's that? Is that the Torterra? Torterra comes in. So that's fine. Um, we go for a Wish here and that's going to do nothing to the Torterra. Now this Torterra became a threat the minute it came on the field as a free switch in on my Umbreon. Now here's the thing, right? Do we go for a Foul Play expecting a Shell Smash? I think we should do. So let's go for a Foul Play expecting a Shell Smash. They go for the Shell Smash as I expected. This Foul Play is going to sting that Torterra quite a bit uh, right now. So Torterra's defenses are lowered and its offenses are raised to sky high levels. And then we go for a Foul Play. Foul Play comes through. Let's see how much damage we're talking here. Oh, it takes out the Torterra in one shot. Umbreon coming through with the Foul Play KO. Well, you got to love it. And then we get the Wish as well, which is always nice. Recovering us back to full. In comes Green Tea. Who's Green Tea? The Pelipper. Okay, Pelipper comes in. That's fine. Drizzle. That's also fine. If we assume they're probably going to go for a U-turn here because they can't actually touch us. Um, they more than likely expect us to go for a Wish here to try and pass on to the Latios. So let's go for a Thunder Wave and try and catch that Kingdra. Uh, Thunder Wave comes through. We actually outspeed the Pelipper, which is interesting. So Umbreon outspeeds the Pelipper. So it must be a defensive build, which is fine. Again, it paralyzes great and all. And they couldn't move because they were fully paralyzed as well, which is even better. So... And um, what we'll do now is we'll go for a Wish. And then we'll try and get Latios in to get the Wish on it. So Wish comes through. Like so, Umbreon's actually putting in the work right now. Not going to lie. They go for a U-turn though. And then their only physical attacker they can go into really here is going to be the Great Tusk. So let's see them do that. Kingdra comes in. That's a good switch, I guess. I don't really see what it's going to do. Unless it's a physical Kingdra. We don't have to worry too much here. So um, what we can do here is... If we assume the physical Kingdra, by the way, they brought it in, they're going to go for a Wave Crash. We should switch out. I'm going to go straight into Ninetales. Ninetales seems like a good switch. We can get rid of the Rain. And then we can go straight for a Aurora Veil. Um, so Vimto is going to come in. Like so. And we get the Snow up, which gets rid of the Rain, obviously. We're losing its Swift Swim. They go ahead and Terra. Ooh, what type are they going to Terra into? 
If they Terra Steel Flash Cannon here, that's going to be really good for them. Terra Water, though, that's fine. Terra Water's fine. It's no longer boosted by rain, at least, so my Ninetales can probably take this Wave Crash. Unless they're special. They are special. Okay, so they're special. They're going to hit us on the special side. We might not take this. So that comes through, and that's going to cleanly take us out, unfortunately. But at least we got rid of the rain for now. For now. So now, um, we can probably go into... We can pretty much go into whatever we want. Um... I'm leaning to if they're gonna if they're locked into Hydromon, they could be choice specs. They could be choice specs. Uh, in which case, maybe Chestnut's the best way to go about this. Chestnut might be the best way to go about this. I think Chestnut could actually do really well here. So let's go Chestnut. Let's go into Juggernaut. The Chestnut. And then obviously we're assuming that they're locked in here. So we should go for a belly drum. But if they go for an Ice Beam, we want to be able to take it. So I'm going to Terra and I'm going to Belly Drum right now. So they do withdraw the King Drum. Are they going to go Pelipper? Pelipper would make sense. Mammoth. That's going to be the Great Tusk, right? Yeah, Great Tusk comes in. Now, we don't know what type of Great Tusk this is. It could be defensive. It could be anything, really. But we Terra Steel. I Terra Steel to anticipating the Ice Beam on the King Drum. But I guess they were Specs if they took out my Ninetales. I just didn't know for sure. I don't like to assume, you know. I'm not. I, I don't like to run damage calcs mid battle, but I, I I've gotten pretty used to like. Oh, I didn't eat I, my, my Pokemon are EV'd for level 50, so I'm not gonna get the Citrus Berry there either, which is unfortunate. So, um, we definitely go for a Trailblaze here. Uh, we do out speed, which is great, which means we do nearly take out the Great Tusk, getting a speed boost in the same time. The Rocky Helmet is unfortunate, and uh, it does activate our Citrus Berry at least. So we might be able to take this next move a bit better. As they go for an Earthquake, which is probably going to take us out, right? Yeah, it does. So Chestnut goes down after doing a lot of damage to the Great Tusk, at least. A lot of damage to the Great Tusk, at least. Maybe I should have gone for a Drain Punch there to get the health back, but I don't think we would have taken the Earthquake anyway, so it is what it is. So this may be a Salazzle thing, so uh, let's go Salazzle now. Now that we've weakened the Great Tusk, we can just go for a Flamethrower, no problems. So I'll bring Salazzle in. They more than likely switch out to preserve this thing. Because they can go into Pelipper right now. So I'm going to Nasty Plot in this thing's face. And um, they do withdraw. So this is actually really good for us. Because we've got a Focus Sash, which we can keep intact. They're going to go into Green Tea, which is going to be the uh, Pelipper once again. To get the rain up, which makes sense. So Drizzle comes through. Gets rid of that snow. We go for a Nasty Plot. And Salazzle could come through for us here. So Lazzle could come through for us here. So let's go for a Sludge Wave real quick. So Sludge Wave comes through. That's going to take out the Pelipper, right? Yeah, it does take out the Pelipper cleanly. So Pelipper goes down, which is great. Now they probably go into Kingdra, right? So if they go into Kingdra, we're going to be in a bit of a pickle. So Kingdra the Teeny comes in. Nice and shiny with the Terrestrialization hat. That looks cool. Um, we definitely go for a Sludge Wave. It stabs. It's not neutral. All that stuff. They go for a Hydro Pump, and they unfortunately for them miss. Meaning Salazzle can pull off this Sludge Wave with keeping its Focus Sash intact as the Kingdra goes down. Now we don't have to worry about the Jolteon as much, which is absolutely amazing. The only problem we've got is that we can't really go for Flamethrower on the anything. But then again, Flamethrower is the only thing we need Flamethrower for is the Great Tusk, and it's already nearly dead. So in comes Raikou the Jolteon. And I think the way around this for them is to Volt Switch here and then sack off Great Tusk. So I go for a Sludge Wave 100% of the time here. We outspeed, so they aren't a timid Jolteon, but they do live with a Focus Sash. As they go for a Thunder in the rain, which could paralyze us. It's got a good chance, but it doesn't. We live with our Focus Sash, which is fantastic. And we're able to go for a Flamethrower now to finish off just in case the Great Tusk comes in. Flamethrower comes through. Like I said, we outspeed, which is great. They must be a modest Jolteon. Um, if they're Focus Sash, that makes kind of sense. So the Jolteon goes down, which is fantastic. Salazzle's looking pretty good right now. As in comes Revali of the Distant Past. It's going to be the Braviary, right? Yeah, and the Hisuian Braviary. Nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. So let's see if this thing can take a Sludge Wave. I don't think it can, but it depends on the build. Sludge Wave comes through, which is fantastic. And uh, hopefully down, down goes the Braviary. So that is amazing. We have just swept this team with a Salazzle, which is fantastic. I love Salazzle so much. And I'm so glad that we pulled this off. Um, I was like, I came into the battle thinking Chestnut was going to be the one. But you know what? Salazzle 
comes through. So let's go for a flamethrower here just to take out this great tusk. And that is going to be the game. So there's the flamethrower in the rain. Doesn't matter. We're at plus two. Great Tusk goes down, and that's going to be the game. So GG Turtle Owner, that was a fun one. Salazzle really shining that one. So this is going to be a great Salazzle video, that's for sure. So GG. All right, what have we got here? Envy has brought a Florgeous Empoleon, Sliverwing Great Tusk, Hydrapple, and a Deoxys Defense. Pretty powerful stuff, I will say. Um, we could get some Chestnut action here, or Salazzle action. I think we could probably do well with them. Um, definitely Chestnut's going to do really well here if we get Belly Drum off. That's for sure. Um, so I'm thinking lead nine tails get the screens up straight away. They might predict that and go with the Empoleon, um, Empoleon lead, but they probably lead with the Oxys defense anyway. Um, so I might just lead off with Latin nine tails and get the Aurora Veil up straight away. I think that's going to be really beneficial. And the quicker we can get Chestnut in and get a Belly Drum off, the better. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Envy. So they're going to lead off with Deoxys, as I expected. And I led off with my Ninetales. So this is not a bad matchup, not a best matchup ever. Um, they probably don't have Brick Break, that's for sure. It looks like they haven't got Defog either. They've got Rapid Spin on the De uh, Great Tusk. So these Aurora Veils are going to be really beneficial to us. Um, so let's go for the Aurora Veil now. And if they go for Spikes, we'll just Encore them into it and then go into Chestnut or something. So Aurora Veil comes through, which is great. Making our team strong against physical and special moves. They go for a Spikes, which is fine. Now, instead of wasting a turn Encoring here, I'm actually tempted to go into my uh, Chestnut straight up. Um, I know it's a Psychic type and all that, but I feel like Chestnut can do really well because their team isn't exactly fast. So if we go Chestnut, I think we're going to be all right. So let's go Chestnut now. We'll get a Belly Drum up, like so. They're probably expecting us to go for our own Spikes. So we'll go into Chestnut, like so. We'll get hurt by the Spikes a little bit. It's fine. They go for a teleport. Oh, I didn't expect that. They only saw one layer of spikes. That's interesting. So Deoxys does go back. I don't like how Deoxys like reappears on the field after it uses teleport just to be withdrawn again. It's such a weird way of animating that. So Floor just comes in, which is interesting. So Floor just is a very interesting choice here because we can take this to our advantage. Let's tear us straight away and belly drum. I don't think they'll tear a fire. I think they fully expect us to switch out here. Chestnut is usually used as a defensive Pokemon. Um, so I think they'll expect us to switch out here. So we're going to Terrestrialize straight away. I don't think they'll expect this at all. The only thing is after the Belly Drum is that that Sliverwing becomes a big, a bit of a problem for Chestnut. Because obviously it, it quad resist, no, it, it resists the Trailblaze. It resists the Drain Punch and it resists the Knockoff. So uh, Drain Punch is definitely our best option against that. But we go for the Belly Drum anyway. Get that nice boost in our attack. Maxing it out and then we go for the citrus berry to get our health back up now if they go for a moonblast Which I don't think I don't know whether moonblast affects you if you got bulletproof I can never remember whether moonblast counts or not It does it does work. It does work on bulletproof ones. So that doesn't do much damage at all it Does lower our special attack unfortunately, but that's fine now We just simply go for a trailblaze take this floor just out and go from there They do withdraw the floor just are they gonna go sliverwing here? Sliverwing would work, but deoxys is what's gonna come in now, which is fine. So Deoxys comes in, and um, Deoxys can probably take a Trailblaze, no problem. But it can't take the knockoff that comes afterwards. So Trailblaze does 50%. We do not need another speed boost to outspeed their team. Unless the Choice Scarf on something, so I might actually go for another Trailblaze. I'm going to go for another Trailblaze because it will take it out and there's no palm in it. Because it's going to boost our speed. So Deoxys defense goes down, which is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Getting that thing out of the way is great. It's a big wall to our team. Um, now, I think Hydrapple can probably take a Drain Punch. And Sliverwing is definitely their best option, right? Hydrapple comes in. That's a good one. It's a good one. Uh, nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. So, let's see if Hydrapple can take a Drain Punch. Let's go for the Drain Punch. Get that health back. And then we can kind of go from there. Drain Punch comes through. Chestnut is putting in the work as the Hydrapple goes down to the Drain Punch. And this is a very quick end to the... <laughs> to the video. Chestnut, wow, wow, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. Donphan comes in. So, Great Tusk, as we know from the battle we had with Salazzle, it can take a Trailblaze. And it can probably take us out of an Earthquake. Let's go for the Trailblaze and hope and pray for the best here. So, Trailblaze comes through. It is unfortunately not going to be able to KO the, uh, the uh, Great Tusk. They don't seem to have Rocky Helmet, at least. And they go for an Earthquake, which might not KO us. Wow, that does not do much damage at all. No damage at all. Chestnut is just too... Uh, that's definitely a defensive Great Tusk then by that damage. So let's go for a Drain Punch and get some health back. There we go. Drain Punch comes through. 
Don Fan. Greg Tusk goes down, which is fantastic. Like I said, though, I'm pretty sure Sliverwing can live a Drain Punch here and go for a close combat, right? Let's um let's see what they decide to do here because they haven't Terra Jet either, which is always interesting. Oh, the Aurora Veil is what made the Earthquake not do much damage. Yeah, I always forget we have the Aurora Veil up. So Volcarona comes in, which is the Sliverwing, of course. Nice and shiny, gotta love it. Um, we have to go for a Drain Punch here to maximize our defense, uh, our health recovery. So let's go for a Drain Punch real quick. Um, knockoff could have also been beneficial because if they're choice banded, we, we would have taken it better. But Drain Punch gets our health back, so it's kind of like one or the other. So I decided to go with this option um, as indeedly, deedly, deedly, they go for a close combat, which is going to take out Chestnut, unfortunately. So Chestnut's Reign of Terror is over. It took out three of his, his Pokemon. Great Tusk, Hydrapple, and Deoxys Defense all went down. Now, bear in mind they haven't Terra yet. We've got to make a decision here. So I'm, I'm going to go into Salazzle. Now, our Focus Sash is going to be broken. However, I have a feeling... Because we didn't see booster energy that they're either choice scarfed or choice banded. So I want to go for a nasty plot here. I really want to go for a nasty plot right here. Let's go for a nasty plot. Let's try it. So they withdraw. They probably are choice banded by that by that choice. Um, and they're going to go into Prince, which is probably the Empoleon, right? Yeah, Empoleon comes in. So nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. Uh, we go for a nasty plot. Of course, it's going to boost our special attack up. We're just kind of setting up sweepers here. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to get as much damage off on this thing as possible. So I'm going to go for Flamethrower. Uh, Flamethrower comes through and that's going to do a nice uh, chunk of damage. Oh, it nearly takes them out as well as they go for an agility. Ooh, that's scary. That is scary. Now we can still use Salazzle for taking out that Florges. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into, because they've got an agility up. So I'm going to go into Fretress. That way we can hold up our red card and get them out of there so they'll lose our agility. So let's go into Alcatraz real quick, the Ferretris. There we go. Spikes are going to hurt us, which is fine. They go for a Surf, which isn't going to KO us, but it nearly does the job. As we hold up our red card and get that Empoleon out of there. So that's that's great. Um, hopefully we see a floor just switch here. Um, that'd be ideal. As we do see a floor just switch. Because I don't want the Sliverwing, I don't want the Sliverwing to get a free switch in, basically. Um, now, I, I'm going to try and get the Stealth Rocks up, even though I know they're probably going to go for a Wish or something. So, I'm going to go for a Stealth Rocks here. They probably just go for a Moonblast and take us out, but uh, either way, it's fine. They go for a Moonblast and take us out, that's fine. Fretress goes down, no Stealth Rocks. It's whatever. We, we, it did its job. It red carded the agility Empoleon, which was a big threat. Um, now, we can go back into Salazzle. We can go back into Salazzle. And Salazzle can set up on this floor just once again. So we're going to get hurt by the spikes. And once again, I am going to set up a nasty plot because I don't think this uh, floor just is going to be able to touch us with anything over the Moonblast. So they are going to Terra. Oh, what type are they going to Terra into though? If it's Steel, they, may, they might be going to Terra Steel to be immune to the Sludge Wave. Poison. Oh, okay. So at least we don't have to worry about a Terra Blast here or any sort of coverage move that can actually hit us. So um, let's go for that nasty plot. We'll get plot in real quick. And then we quad resist Moonblast, and we also resist the Terra Blast. Calm Mind. Oh, dear. That's not good. So, luckily, this is not a bad situation for us to be in. We are going to be better off if we get another Nasty Plot up, so I'm going to go for another Nasty Plot here. Let's see what they're going to do, whether they go for the attack or not. Calm Mind again. So, they're at plus two special defense, and we're at plus, two, uh, plus four special attack. We could go for another... Nasty plot here, but I'm not sure whether we live a Moonblast or not. I'm pretty sure we do live a Moonblast, so I'm going to go for the Nasty Plot once again. I'm going to get to plus six. So, in this game, we've got Chestnut to plus six, and we've got Slazzle to plus six. We're just setting up on this game. That's a <laughs> pretty awesome. I love I love games like this. So, Slazzle comes through. We get that. They go for a Draining Kiss, so that does no damage, even at plus two. That is unfortunate for them. So, they have Draining Kiss and not Moonblast. Oh, they do have Moonblast. We saw that earlier, but... Um, they obviously wanted the health recovery, I guess. So let's go for a flamethrower here. This should do a lot of damage to the floor. Just might even take them out. It does half. They go for another Calm Mind. I'm not confident that another flamethrower will take them out, but I'm pretty confident that we can take a Moonblast or a Draining Kiss the next turn. So um, they do have leftovers, which is good to know. So this flamethrower might not take them out from here, but it might at the same time. I think it's a roll. We can't go for another Nasty Plot anyway. Our only option is the Flamethrower, and it does 
take out the Florgis. Salazzle coming through once again. So now we've got um, Sliverwing with banded first impression potentially. And that could come through. That really could come through. It is four times resisted by us though. So we might be able to take first impression even though it's choice banded. We might. Unless the choice scarfed, in which case we don't take it. So let's go for a flamethrower here. If they're scarfed, then so be it. They take us out of an earthquake. If not, then we're, they're all right. They are first impression, which is going to do no damage, unfortunately. Even with the choice band, if they are banded. Flamethrower comes through, takes out the Sliverwing. And it looks like Salazzle has won us another game, which is absolutely amazing. This is going to make for a nice little Salazzle video right here, which I love to see. I really like Salazzle. Um, I like any reptile Pokemon or dragon Pokemon or dinosaur Pokemon. Anything like that, I love. So let's go for another flamethrower, take out this Empoleon, and we are good. That is good game right there. So GG Envious Goon, that was a really fun one. Did enjoy that. Slazzle popped off. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. GG's.